everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here, and today I have a bunch of really fun, like everyday object kind of projects. And because of that, I think you can use really any kind of paper or style that you feel like you want to go with. So obviously, first of all, we should talk about this telephone, I almost said cell phone, which obviously it's not a cell phone. And the lid is hinged, as you can see, and it's finished off on the inside real nice, which makes it perfect for putting something fun in there as a little gift for someone. And I even took some curly ribbon and made a little cord here, which I just hot glued on both sides. So that is really fun. And again, you know, you can make it in all kinds of different colors. Obviously, mine's kind of crazy and yellow. You can make it more traditional and like gray or black or really any kind of color. So also, we have our really fun little two door, two drawer dresser. It's kind of hard to say. And the little drawers just slide right out. And obviously it's not the kind of thing you're going to want to use, you know, regularly because it's paper. But I think you could actually really use it in your craft room or wherever if it's something that you're not going to need to get to like every day. So, you know, maybe some buttons or something in your craft stash or whatever. And you can make it match your craft room decor or really whatever because it's so, it's so plain that you could really jazz it up however you want. So. We also have a little jewelry box here, which I actually made for myself because I have a necklace that I want to give my little niece and I needed a little box to put it in. So I made this and then I thought, hey, why not make it part of this kit? Cause maybe you can use it too for if you have, um, you know, any kind of jewelry, like a bracelet, earrings, necklace, whether you bought it or if you made it yourself, since you're probably super crafty, then you can make it really cute and make the box look however you want. So we also have two cards that go with the whole theme a little bit of this. So if you're making one of the 3D projects, a card to go with it is always nice. So just a fun little, little pretty girly card and you can let your machine do all the work here. It looks like a wow factor because it's so intricate with the lace and everything, but it's really not hard to put together at all once your machine does all the work. So we also have a cute little simple card with some paper doll garland on it and this dimensional banner which is really cool kind of pops out and again just nice and simple and cute but would definitely brighten someone's day up if they got that. So the paper that I used this time is by Cartabella and every time I've ever worked with Cartabella paper it's been this really heavy really textured feel to it so i, I want to say they do that with all their paper but I'm, I'm not positive that all of it is like that but it's just so like lush and what's the word i don't know it just cuts really well in your machine it feels very rich and very textured i actually turn up my my pressure one setting on my machine when i cut this paper and it cuts perfectly every time like like butter as they say so I loved working with that for this kit and I also got the little smaller pad which I found on two peas in a bucket.com. But again, like I was saying before, really any kind of paper with these projects is going to look cool if that's what you want to do. So I have all my pieces cut out to show you how these go together. So let's get started. So first let's take a look at our jewelry box and it's all just cut out of one piece of 12 by 12 paper unless you want to add this top panel in a different piece of paper. So we've got these two here, which are the top, the lid, and these two, which are the bottom of the box. So since these two are really similar, we're going to take the bottom out of here, because once you know how to do the top, you can do the bottom. So what I want to do here is go ahead and fold all these score lines ahead of time. And for these ones, it's nice if you have a, a bone folder, if you can just smash those down and make them really crisp and clean. If you don't know what a bone folder is, they have them at the craft store usually. I think I've gotten one for a couple, like six bucks or five bucks with a coupon. And it's just a little scoring tool that helps you fold your creases. Oops. So I went ahead and I folded those creases extra hard since they're going to be folded completely over on top of themselves. But the rest of the creases don't need to be that sharp. So as you can see, I just need to put glue on all three of these tabs here, being extra careful to go all the way out to the corners of the tabs and not to put too much glue on so that it's not 
coming out the sides of my project. And then I can flip it over, push down from the inside, and then I want to glue all four of these flaps over. And then I want to take my leftover rectangle here and glue that inside to finish it off. So next for our chest of drawers here, I'm just going to make one drawer first. And I've got my pieces here to do that, which are two like this and two rectangles, one of which is a little larger than the other one. So to start, let's take these two longer pieces and glue them together like so here. And for my drawer that I made here, I have some really wacky brads by Tim Holtz that look like little drawer pulls. And it would certainly still look cool if you just use regular brads, which is what I was going to do until I remembered that I had those crazy brads because a lot of dresser drawers have, um, you know, just round knobs, which is originally what I was going to do. So I think if you did that, it would look really cute. So I've got all four sides together here. And now all I need to do is fold these four over, put glue on all four of them, and then I want to take the larger of these two. Here's the larger one. I want to glue that right onto the bottom. And then I can flip it over, press down from the inside, and then I want to glue these four flaps over like this. And then I can take this smaller rectangle and glue that inside to finish it off. So now you can see that these two little little holes here are lined up and ready for either a brad or whatever you want to put in there. So next for our the body of our dresser here, I've got the main pieces of the dresser laid out, which is the, the side in the front, the other side in the back, and then we've got two like this and two like this. And these form the interior of the dresser where the drawer can slide in and out. So then these rectangles here, which are the same size, are the top and the bottom. And then we've got four legs, which look like this. So let's start by gluing the front and the sides and the back together here like this. And I just want to line it up as best I can here, making sure to line up the side of the paper with the scored part of the other paper. So at this point, let's flip over our long piece here like this. And now I'm going to take my interior pieces. And as you can see, they're a little bit different. This one has a little bit longer of tabs on the top and bottom than the other one. So that we need one of this and one of this because there are there's two of these and there's two of these. But for now, just grab one and one. So I want to go ahead and glue these together side to side. But usually I would glue it like this with the tab underneath. But I want to glue the tab on the outside. That way my drawer can slide in and out without extra friction or being uneven. So it's kind of strange, but I'm putting my glue on the other side of the tab and I'm lining it up as best I can again. And then I want to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side with a nice little line of glue on this tab. Okay. And I want that to be nice and lined up. Okay. So now these tabs actually need to get folded away from our our little part of the project here. And now as you can see these tabs are almost all the same except this one is pretty skinny down here and on the other side it's also pretty skinny. So that means that needs to go on the, in the middle of your project. The skinny parts are going to be here. So what I want to do is glue this like this. I don't want to glue it 
like this. I need to be sure that the skinny tab is in this middle area. So I can go ahead and put glue all over these four tabs here. And like I always say, you can take your time a little bit more than I am right now with your glue. Be a little more meticulous if you want. And then I want to look down at my project from above and make sure that I'm lining it up really nice. And it looks pretty good to me. You can take your time a little more if you want to. And I'm going to push down on those tabs. Then go ahead and make the other one of these and put that on the bottom, making sure that the skinny tab is in the middle here. Then we can go ahead and put our back in place. So to do that, I want to put glue on all of these tabs on both of these drawer inserts. And then I also want to put glue on the side tab of the back of my dresser. Then I want to bend it around and close it up like this being sure to line it up as best you can and pushing down from the back. So it's actually nice and sturdy, which is cool. So now I can go ahead and put glue on all four of these tabs on the bottom here. I'm just very quickly throwing some glue on here so I can show you the leg of my dresser because this is the bottom. And I want to go ahead and do the same thing on the top, put glue on these four tabs and put the top in place. So let's flip it over to the bottom and grab one of our legs. And I'm putting some glue on this side tab over here. And just closing that up like this. And as you can probably guess, just want to put a nice even little layer of glue on these three tabs on the top of the leg and also on the bottom of the leg. And the wider, the wider part is the top, so we can go ahead and load that up with some glue. And then you can place it out to the corner if you want, but I think it looks better about a quarter of an inch in. And you just want to maybe hold that a little bit extra longer than usual just to make sure that it's getting a good hold. So do that for all four of the legs. And then you can go ahead and put any panels or embellishments like this fun lace or whatever. I embossed the back and it's kind of cute. So first of all, for our telephone, I'm just going to start with the base here, which is minus this hinged lid. So for that, we've got um, three pieces here. And on the front of this one, you can see your machine has cut a little bit of a scored circle. That's just a guideline to say, hey, that's the front of the phone. And on this one, this extra flap is the back hinge. And then, of course, we've got the bottom. So we can go ahead and grab any, either of these pieces. And I just want to put some glue on one little set of tabs here. And all I'm going to do is fold it around and make sure it's getting a good hold on the other side. And then I can go ahead and kind of work my way around here by doing the same thing on the other side. So I can grab this other piece here. And I just want to work my way up the group of tabs, just one at a time. Oops, see I'm going too fast because that one was not done drying. So I just need to hold that for a few seconds longer as I work my way up the side. So we just want to do this all the way around our phone. until the whole thing is together. So I've got the four sides of my base together here and I just want to flip it over and 
carefully put some glue on all four of these tabs, going all the way out to the corners of the tabs to make sure that it gets a nice hold. So we can go ahead and stick the bottom in place. And I've got it lined up pretty nicely so I can flip it over and press down on all four sides from the inside. So now let's set this guy aside and take a look at the top of our phone. So next for the lid of our phone, minus the handset here, just this little top lid part, I've got five pieces which are numbered and the, these four are numbered. There's one, two, three, and four. And I went ahead and took a marker and I darkened in what my machine already cut into each piece. And the reason there's a little circle on these four is just to differentiate them from some other numbered pieces in this project. So we can go ahead and take piece number one, just for kicks, doesn't really matter which, which one you grab first. And I want to start by gluing them all together into, into like a circle uh, or like a gluing them all together side to side basically. And I'm going to work my way around just gluing these two sides together on all four pieces. So now I've got my way, I've worked my way all the way around and the four sides are all together, so it's starting to take shape. So now, all I want to do is, on each of the four corners, there is a little area like this. So these two triangles here are going to come together, get a little glue on top of them, and then this square will fold over on top of each. So go ahead and do that on all four corners. Now that my lid is taking shape, I can take this crazy looking plus sign piece and I want these to all be folded like this and then these triangles to be folded down. So then, it doesn't matter which way you turn it, all four sides are the same. And what I want to do is take my lid and I want to put glue on this really thin little tab here on all four sides. And I am, I'm kind of holding this up in the air and it's a little difficult, but you get the idea and I'm sure your glue will be nice and meticulous. And then if you want to set this on the edge of a table so that this part's hanging over, it can be nice and flat, which I find is very helpful when you're working with something. The, the flatter surface, the better, the more you can set it down. And we just want to glue that into place like this. And I just want to make sure that it's lined up as nicely as possible. And I can look from the other side and maybe push these down a little bit. So the last thing to do here is just to put a little bit of glue on this triangle here. Slide that in and push it up from the inside and then do that for all four corners also. Then, in order to put this in place on our phone, we want to put some glue on this hinge flap here. And if you want to go ahead and embellish your phone somewhat first with some of those panels or something, you can always do this hinge part later or you can do it now, it doesn't really matter. So make sure that it, it closes nicely, which means that you lined it up the right way. And you can leave it like this, or what I, I, what I did with mine, which is nice, is I put a little bit of glue inside here, and I folded it like this. So now that hinge is nice and sturdy, and I lined it up really nicely. So now let's finally just take a look at the handset of our phone, which you don't have to glue down, but I glued it down. 
with some hot glue on my project. And basically this is made up of three parts, except for the, the decoration. It's got the two, the two ends, which are like round, and then obviously the middle. So first, let's take a look at the middle, which are these six pieces numbered one through six. And, and then one of the, the ends both look like this, which is just one piece. So what we want to do first is line up our six pieces and I went ahead and darkened in again with a marker these numbers that your machine will cut into your piece. So what we want to do is basically just go in order gluing one to the other one through six. So to do that I'm going to put glue on all four of the side tabs, grab the next piece and I'm going to go one at a time, making sure that the first tab is taking hold before I move on so that it doesn't get pulled out of place. And I'm just going to work my way up the piece, up, up both of the pieces. So there are my first two pieces glued together. So now go ahead and work your way all the way one through six. So now I've got most of, I've got all six of the pieces together and I just want to close it up, which is the same exact like procedure that I did before. And it's just a little uh, a little different because I'm closing it up. But I can reach in from the inside and squeeze those tabs, which makes it easy to get it get it really perfect actually. So there is the middle of our piece and actually I want to kind of flip these tabs out a little, just a little bit and set this one aside. Now we can put together our two ends of our handset here and I'm going to start by gluing that down and I want to work my way around one tab at a time here and I want to really do my best to line it up as best I can because I want to make sure that it's it's lined up real nice because if I if I start to get off on one piece it's going to affect the next one and the next one and it's going to kind of snowball into paper craft insanity. So I'm just being extra careful lining these up. And I'm almost done here. And the nice thing about this shape is this hole in the middle so that we can reach in from the inside. And now I'm at this last one here, so I want to put a little glue on its side tab as well as this tab up here. And get that into place as well as this one into the inside. So there we go. And as you could probably guess, we're going to do pretty much the same thing here gluing this other side down. So, however, instead of one tab at a time, I'm going to do, I'm going to put glue on two at a time. And again, we really want to take, take your time a little bit and be extra careful lining things up. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the rest of these tabs here and I've got I've got maybe a little too much glue on these pieces but it's not the end of the world so I want to reach in from the inside and really hold those for a while while they dry because they really want to come come undone if I move on too quickly to the other side but since there is glue on the other side I should make sure those are going into place. Okay, so here is 
one of the ends of our phone. <coughs> and as you could probably guess, you can see that those two holes look similar. And this one is going to go inside. So let's put a little dash of glue on all of these tabs. And then we can go ahead and stick that in there and make sure that all, all of the tabs are going in. And then from the inside, I can start to bend those tabs over and it almost looks like they weren't even two pieces to begin with. So again, luckily this, there's this big hole, this big circle in the end of my phone. So it makes it nice for me to be able to reach in and fold those tabs around from the inside. So you just want to go ahead and do that on the other side also. And then when you're ready to embellish your phone, you can see, you can pretty much see where all of these panels go. And I would just say before you glue them down, just hold it up to the side and say, yes, that definitely goes there before you glue it down. So you just want to do a little check before you glue it because some the front is slightly different from the sides. So just be extra careful. And same thing with these, these panels here. And then same thing for the, these phone panels. I've got this crazy yellow pattern here and these just go firmly around all of the sides. And you just want to check to make sure that you've got the right piece in the right place before you glue it down. So that's it for our phone. So there you have it, super fun everyday projects to do any time of year, especially now before fall and Christmas start to hit us. So thanks for watching. If you make any of these projects, you'll have to share a picture on our Facebook wall or on your blog or Instagram or Pinterest. So again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.